let us try to look at the completeness theorem. Of course, we won't finish the proof today. And I am only going to do version 1 of completeness theorem. Okay, so this is uh, if F S is consistent, then S is satisfiable. Okay. If S is consistent, then S is satisfiable. What would be the corresponding soundness version? If F is, if S is, this is the converse of soundness. And what did we say earlier? Soundness has to do with single turnstile implies double turnstile. But if you read this, con the converse of this, what is that converse? If S is satisfiable, then it is consistent. So does that sound contradictory against your intro intuition? Yes, but it's not. Why? Because think about the contrapositive of that statement. The converse of this says that if S is satisfiable, then it is consistent. But the contrapositive of that statement is if it is inconsistent, then it is contradictory or unsatisfiable. And inconsistency is a positive definition. It uses turnstile. The definition of consistency is a negative definition. It uses there doesn't exist a proof of. So we don't want to deal with that. Yeah, that's why I pointed out that the definition of consistency is a negative one. Whereas the definition of inconsistency is a positive one. So there is no problem whatsoever. Okay, so completeness theorem version 1, the version 2 would be that if, there, if T is a logical consequence of S, then there is a proof of T from S. Okay, so that just, uh, I mean that is very easy to conclude from here. Okay, now this particular proof, before I begin with the proof, there is one important remark here that this proof is very far from being constructive. See, S is consistent, so there is something, some T which cannot be proved from S. And from that, we are going to guarantee the existence of a valuation V such that V of capital S is true. Now some kind of magic must be involved here and in this class what is magic? Zorn's lemma. Yeah? Or some equivalent of axiom of choice. In fact, we have seen the proof of Boolean prime filter theorem. So I can tell you that Boolean prime filter theorem is a strict consequence of axiom of choice or Zorn's lemma. Like axiom of choice, Zorn's lemma and well-ordering theorem, they are all equivalent to each other. But Boolean prime filter theorem that is strictly weaker, like it follows from Zorn's lemma, but Zorn's lemma does not follow from that. So it is somewhere here. But completeness theorem is an equivalent of Boolean prime filter theorem. Okay, so we may as well use that. We are not going to do that. We are going to do a proof using Zorn's lemma. That is our step one. Now, whenever we say Zorn's lemma, 
what comes to your mind? There should be a poset. Okay, so poset of what? Poset of what? Incomplete attempts. Okay, poset of incomplete attempts so that Zon's lemma will guarantee existence of a maximal attempt, a complete attempt. Now, what exactly are we trying to make complete here? S is only given to be consistent. We would like to extend it to something that is maximally consistent. Maximally consistent is an analog of an ultra filter or a maximal filter. Okay, then once we obtain that ultra filter, we will simply define a valuation in a very natural way. Yeah, valuation doesn't need any thinking after that. There is a bunch of results we need to prove, but the construction of valuation is not a problem. So what do we need? We are given a consistent set, but we want to extend it to a maximally consistent set. So let us do that. So there are two steps in the proof. Step one, use Zon's lemma to find a maximal consistent extension of S and then step 2 is to define the valuation and verifying that it is actually a valuation. Okay, maximally consistent, what does that mean? That you have a saturation, a saturated set. Yeah, this, if T is a maximally consistent set, then if you add anything else to it, it immediately becomes contradictory or inconsistent. Yeah, I mean, in this case, inconsistent. So we want to do that. Well, uh, can you s give me any idea how to proceed with Zon's lemma? We need a poset and we need a non-empty poset. Yeah, without non-emptiness, we cannot proceed. What poset should I define? Yes? Only? Only propositional variables. Where are they coming from? We are working inside SL. Consistent sets containing S. Like, uh, have S as a subset. Right. So let gamma be, this is capital gamma, be all those T's subsets of SL such that T contains S, of course. Yeah, there should be extensions of S and T is consistent. See, once you know your goal, use Zon's lemma to find a maximally, maximal consistent extension of S. You hide the word maximal and whatever you obtain, that is your poset. Yeah, all consistent extensions of S. So that's what we have written. Let, let gamma be this. B, uh, a poset with inclusion. Why is gamma non-empty? Right. Since S belongs to gamma, S is non-empty. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, gamma is non-empty. First tick. What is the second property that we need to verify? Every chain has an upper bound. So let Ti, uh, okay, wait, uh, let I be, be a linear order and Ti, I in I, 
be a chain in gamma such that Ti is contained inside Tj if and only if what should I say if and only if i is less equal j. So actually it is ordered by capital I. Okay. And then let T bar be defined to be union of Ti I in I. What do we need to claim? That T bar is? T bar clearly contains S. We don't need to claim T R. T bar is maximal. We only need to claim that T bar is consistent. T bar belongs to gamma. T bar clearly contains S. So we only need to check that T bar is consistent to be in gamma. Yeah? We claim that T bar belongs to gamma, i.e. T bar is consistent. Okay, now tell me, what kind of proof would you like to use here? Contrapositive. Contra Contrapositive or contradiction, we'll decide later. Okay, so T bar is consistent, we cannot work with consistency. We always have to work with inconsistency, very good. So, suppose not. Then T bar is inconsistent. Okay, we worked really hard to find out different criteria for inconsistency. So we are going to use lemma 7 here. Let me remind you what lemma 7 was. Lemma 7 says that S is inconsistent if and only if for some S in SL. It proves a contradiction, capital S proves a contradiction which is negation S implies S. Okay, so I am going to go back here. Then by lemma 7, for some S in SL, S proves negation S implies S. Oh, sorry, not S. Uh, I made a mistake here, I should say. T bar. Okay, now what do we need here? So T bar proves this, but T bar could be infinite. Small s. No. There is one more lemma that we have proven which will immediately help us. T bar could be infinite. That's my clue. Hint. Very good. Turn pages. What lemma did we prove about infinite things? What is the meaning of a proof of, T -bar, uh, of this thing from T bar? How many lines can there be? Finitely many. And therefore, finite character of proofs. So you only use finitely many NLAs in this proof. Now each one of those NLAs is going to come from one of the TIs, okay? So by finite character of proof, yeah, there is a finite set T, T prime contained inside T bar such that T prime also proves the same thing.
because we only used finitely many NLAs. But what can you say about T prime? T prime is finite. Yeah? So let T1, T2, Tk be all elements of T prime. Then T prime is a subset of T bar which is equal to union of T i, i in i. So where is T1 coming from? Then there exists I1, I2 up to Ik in capital I such that T I1 T I, uh, sorry, uh, T I J, T I1 belongs to T I1, uh, sorry, T1 belongs to T I1, T2 belongs to T I2 and T K belongs to T I K. Okay, we are done, yeah. What is given here? Ti is a chain. So since it is chain, these I1, I2, Ik, they are comparable and there will be a maximum out of them. Yeah. So since Ti is a chain, for some I0 in I, T prime is a subset of T I naught. All of them, I mean I am basically taking the union of T I1, T I2 and T I K. Yes, standard argument. I mean it is so standard that you eventually get bored. John's lemma arguments are always similar. Yeah. Okay. So T prime is a subset of T I naught. And therefore, by monotonicity, what can you conclude? T i naught also proves negation S implies S. And therefore, by lemma 7 again, T i naught is inconsistent. which is a contradiction. Done? Got this? So we have shown our claim. So every chain has a maximal element. Hey, sorry, every chain has an upper bound. And therefore by Zorn's lemma, so I am just going to write this statement now. Therefore, Zorn's lemma guarantees the existence of a maximal consistent set T naught in gamma. Yeah, I mean it is in gamma which means it, it is consistent and also contains S. Now just one more line which is step 2 and this is where we will pick off tomorrow that define a valuation V from SL to true false by V of little t is equal to true if and only if t belongs to t naught. So I am giving you some food for thought. This is how we define the valuation and we will actually prove it is a valuation. Yeah, we have used the magical part, now second step is this. Let's stop. <laughs>